Check it out. Um, I just uh, put up a post about this Strat yesterday, and um, it was a brutal repair. Um, I took apart the fretboard to get to the truss rod because I could not adjust the truss rod. So um, basically, this guitar came in, and someone sold it to me, and um, they didn't want much money for it. It's, it's a USA 2005 Fender Stratocaster, and it had the original Hartshell case. And um, threw out a low number, and I was like, plugged it in, like, yeah, sure, it's a good price. And I played it, didn't play great, but that's what we do, we set them up. Um, yeah, didn't think much about it. You know, I usually check that, I usually check the truss rod. I mean, I can't take the truss rod cap off of every guitar, but you know, these things, it's not that hard to get in there and check it, right? I was being lazy. And I'm busy, I'm, busy. I'm doing a lot of things here, so I tried to move forward, get the thing purchased and get back to a repair. So a couple days later, when we went to uh, do the setup, truss rod would not adjust. You put the rod in there, you know, this is the right rod for this American guitar, and it not grabbing, clicking. All right, so you think, you know, maybe you're spinning a broken, tr you know, the truss rods sometimes come unhooked uh, down here, and you're spinning the whole rod. That's one thing it could be. Other times it's just stripped out, you know? And here's another thing that happens to this uh, particular truss rod with this shape. A lot of debris gets stuck down in there and um, your truss rod wrench won't go down. It's being pushed back out by like years and years of dust. And you can clear that dust out. You get it in there, you get it seated and you can get torque and it, you can save a guitar that appears to be stripped and ruined. Well, there was nothing in there. It was clear and you couldn't use, I have all these tools, I mark them. Look, I even marked them with tape to remind me which ones will work. I mean, 25, 30 years of doing this, I have thousands of truss rod adjusters and Allen wrenches. Nothing in this building could grab this thing. And I'm like, well, it's stripped, what can we do? So I bought um, the uh, Stumac truss rod saver. And it looks a lot like this. I should, probably should have grabbed it, it's way in the back now but it's made in a flange shape. It gets bigger as it goes in. So, you know, you get, if it's too small, it slowly gets to a bigger size. Oh, what a great idea, right? So I wait for it, I buy it, wait for it to come in the mail, I put it in there, nothing, no grab at all. I'm like, what? well, that was a waste of money. Well, maybe I'll use it for something else, but nothing. Why isn't that working? I don't know, I can't see in there. I, I would love to become small like ant-man and just get down in there and look you know it'd be such a great thing to see what you cannot see and to know i mean you can put your phone in there and get some light it's such a small opening there it's just so hard to tell what's going on um so i mean i can actually see a good uh, hex shape but you know you can't tell if it's stripped or not so i'm like i'm taking that fretboard off i've tried everything so I take the nut off pull this fret out and i put my iron on it and I got that thing hot for a very long time. I'm talking to customers, I got the iron on there. Some of you customers might re remember me doing this. And um, it got so hot that you couldn't even touch the back of the neck. Believe me, there was heat going through that glue. And I was able to get my uh, uh, spatula, which is really, really sharp. It works for this sort of thing. I take bridges off, I take fretboards off all the time with it. And I was only able to get the one side off. And I tried and tried to get this side off and I just could not get that glue to come apart. So I worked my way off on this side and it came up the truss rod nut and pushed half of it off. And I was like, I fixed that sort of thing before. So I'm gonna fix it this time too. I'm not gonna let it get me down, but it looked horrible, you know? So I then I had to, you know, excavate around the truss rod nut just to get it out. And then I had to work it back out somehow, which was almost impossible. I had one truss rod adjuster, uh, one Allen wrench that kind of grabbed better than the others. I'm telling you, these things aren't perfect. Some are bigger, some are smaller. But just enough to work that thing back out, enough to get it off. I don't want to completely obliterate this um, plug, which people say you can just heat that up, take the plug out. That was an option too, but uh, I don't have a lot of experience with that. All right, so I took it all off, I got the nut out, and I looked at it, and it was perfect. It was clean. I mean, it's not stripped. I don't know.
don't know if this, if you can see that. It's not gonna focus, is it? Well, it is clean and perfect, not stripped. But if you take your tool, yeah, <laughs> it sounds stripped, it's not. The tool's good, it works on other fenders. I got other tools, here's one. Seems like a good fit. No, that's even worse. I was going insane. I could not believe I had... See, that grabs a little better. Not enough to adjust the guitar, though. It's already slipping. I mean, you need a lot of torque to get it next straight. I couldn't believe that. There was a hex shape that was made too big for any tool. It's this side here. I don't know if you can see it. I'd love to be able to focus in on that, but... Oh, wait, there it goes, right? Who knows? Well... I'm telling you right now, it was made wrong. So I had a uh, one. I had one just like it, but it had a um, cross shape for a flathead screwdriver to fit in there. And you can get a serious torque with a flathead screwdriver. So I put that in, and then I glued everything back together. And not bad. I don't know if you can see this. If we can focus in on this, but you can, you know, it was. You can kind of see under the A-string where the crack, where it all came apart. And look at that, that's pretty clean, right? See it? Comes out really nice when you have all the right glues and stuff. Top is the worst part, it got a little messy up here. But, I mean, come on. This, this, the bottom's not so great either. But, I've seen guitars used on stage that look worse than this, you know? And this thing, you know, it's not perfect. That dings all over it and stuff, you know? So I don't even know if you would even recognize the work that was done on it. These things get dinged up, beat up, cigarette burns up here. Now that hole up there is bigger than it used to be because we gotta get a flathead screwdriver in there now. But man, you can get a lot of torque and this thing straightened out and woo! It plays beautifully now. It might be the best playing strat in the room at the moment. If you look close, you can see the work, but most people might not even see it ever. And, you know, I just wanted to show that, like, I'm not perfect. And this whole thing of people saying how great they are on the internet, I do it myself. Hey, look at this great repair I did. Look, I'm so great. I'm so great. Ah, I get kind of sick of it. I wanted to show one that wasn't so great. And I've been thinking about this for a long time because even when I was young, I used to watch uh, This Old House. And they would be like, we're gonna put this countertop in right now. Uh, here it goes, and then edit, and it's in. And it's like, well, why don't you show yourself putting it in? Why don't you show yourself making a mistake? Because I'm gonna make a mistake when I do it, and I wanna see how you solve the mistake. This old house where they make mistakes and they gotta solve a mistake. Now there's the show. And that's what I wanted to do with this. The worst things can happen to you sometimes, and you have to solve, you got to problem solve, problem solve your way out of it. And um, so I wanted to do a post where it was bad, but in the end, not so bad. I don't know if I'll ever do a post where it's bad and it stays bad. <laughs> That's pretty bad on the, uh, on the confidence, you know? But uh, I've been doing it 30 years, and from the beginning, I, I really never had one of those. I don't think I have any... I have some I haven't finished yet, but I still plan to get them fixed. But I don't have too many where I gave up on. I, I usually get them working, and that's why I kept doing this, because if I had some that I ruined, I think I would have just like, maybe I'll be an accountant. <laughs> no, I think um, that's what the, the, like, the problem solving, the puzzle, that's the best part of it. And uh, I enjoy it, got kind of good at it from the start, and got better as I got the experience. So, once again, and I didn't go to any school for this sort of thing. I, the, the fun of it is trying to figure it out. And, but in the end, you get a great playing guitar that was, some, most people would have just changed the neck. But I've got a graveyard of necks, cheap necks that I'll never fix because they're not nice enough to fix. But I wasn't going to let a USA neck sit in the graveyard, you know? So, um... There it is, a working USA neck on a really nice 2005 Sunburst Strat. I like this pick card, it's parchment, you know.
really fly on it. The action's great. So there it is. Back in action. Thanks for watching.